Yo, we're back with K100 <laughs> Talks. Everybody's talking about the punk media scrum. And uh, so Disco started off. What do you got to say on the whole affair? And how would you handle this? If you would have been, if, 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 Tony St- if Tony Khan wouldn't have been sitting where he was sitting and you were sitting, what would you have done? Um, it's kind of like a, a lot of basic general questions that, that need categorically to be wrapped around before we get to like you know, right. what I would have done. Right? All right, yeah, so you, can, I, I think up, you can end it up with that. Right, right. Um, so well, when that when that was going, like you know, one of the things that the critics of W of of AW have said from day one, and these are fair criticisms. Okay, they're not hating. They they weren't like you said, but like you know, we said, and a lot of people said, you know, Bischoff, Cornet, just just people that have been in the business for years, right, <clears throat> have said from from the get go, it's like okay, you got a guy. You know, that basically has bought his way into the wrestling business. And like, this is like, let's call a spade a spade here. Is AEW the genesis of the company? You know, Tony was a uh, wrestling, big, huge wrestling Mark fan. Not, not, and I'm not criticizing that. Big fan. Smart Mark on the Wrestling Reserver message boards. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this, this guy comes from another thing, the, the, another thing, DI real quick. Cause I've, I've talked to some people and had this confirmed they had, and I've said this before, there's wrestling booker games, right? Where you book the right. cards and you run the matches and they get star ratings and shit like that. Like just exactly what you'd expect. And Tony was an avid player of said games. So that's where he okay. gets his so, ideas from. Right. Well, okay. he, uh, and let me add this. Cause I said it once on the show, but it's worth repeating. And maybe somebody missed that show. He actually showed, I don't know if he was showing Rocky Romero, if he was showing me, because we were both there together. He was showing me stuff that uh, he was booking when he was like 12 years old. Yeah. You know, and, he, and I think the show, I think his, his promotion was called Dynamite. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So let's just talk about like this. So, so that's, that, that's the kind of the genesis of where we are here, because like you got a guy and like an anomaly in that atmosphere is like you know if you look at the dirt sheet you know wrestling mark smart mark community i i would suggest it's probably not filled with a lot of billionaires could we agree on that uh for sure <laughs> probably more like on the opposite end of the spectrum right so this guy's got you know a lot of the interests that's your typical basic wrestling fan guy growing up you know he likes football he likes sports he likes you know the, the guy's you know part ownership team of, of, of a football team Part ownership of an English Premier Soccer League team, you know, like we've said this before, like me, Conan, like we we would all agree if we had that kind of money, he's doing a lot of the things that we probably would do if we could afford it. Mm-hmm. I would buy a wrestling organization, I would buy a football team, I would probably buy not but the English, I'd probably buy a hockey team if I had the exorbitant resources to to purchase those and and had the, they're, they're my toys. But this guy's worth like. You know, him and his dad are worth like what, like twelve, fifteen billion dollars? Like ridiculous, right? So, well, how would you spend your money? You know, your day to day life is like, you know, I can eat a hundred and fifty dollars worth of food a day. I could also eat a thousand dollars worth of food a day, but the hundred fifty dollars of food would probably taste the same as a thousand, right? You 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 can eat good food of like twenty dollars a day because it, it fulfills your needs, right? So this guy got into the professional wrestling business, bought his way in with. You know, other than the message boards and fantasy booking and stuff, thing, with zero experience in this business whatsoever, right? And me and Conan have been in the bit. You know, we're, we're trained professionals that have been, you know, broken, trained, got beat up a little bit through the course of training to try to make you know to, to get you like toughen you up. Or can you really be like like it wasn't super easy to get into professional wrestling, right? As a, as a matter of fact, you couldn't just buy your way in, like as a wrestler. You just pay. It's like you couldn't pay more for them to put you on TV. It's like okay, I'm, I'm paying to train. If I don't perform the training, I'm, I'm I can't I can't get on TV, right? So, but this guy kind of like bypassed all that, all that, right? But he's a guy. This is like you know, this is from the Dave Res, the Dave Meltzer, the Observer, the Smart Mark Wrestling community. So you know, I don't know who he was consulting with, you know, but we spoke about this, you know, previously, like. As performers, you know, as, as people and performers, well, I would have nothing against the Young Bucks or Kenny Omega, right? And I think you would agree with that too, Cody, correct? Like you'd have been right. very, very professional. However, it's like you, you bought a wrestling organization 
and you hire these guys in the positions of executive vice presidents. So it's like you four are running the show. And he, he had Cody Rhodes, too. Cody had experience, okay? Cody's from the tree of his father, promotion, just like, you know, like you, you like he was the he was the adult in the room, the guy with ex, not personal experience, but his father had experience in running wrestling companies, okay? Booking, dealing with talents, everything, but the other, but the other performers didn't, right? But even with Cody in the room, we said it from the get-go, okay, these guys are going to make some errors, and we have to understand that. This is, the, this is ripe, like the, the, this business model that they're, that they're operating under where you have a, a guy that bought his way into wrestling with no, no, zero experience, zero dues, paid nothing, right? Uh, and you took basically just performers who were high-level performers. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to argue they're high-level performers, but the level of like, you know, the, that, that community – you know, like they got all the awards like every year. The Bucks are the best tag team. The Kenny's the best wrestler. Just like these are the guys from from the Dave Meltzer wrestling community of like, okay, they're the highest performers. But you're putting them in executive vice president position spots. So, you know, I don't, well, I don't know. Let me just say that even whether whether they come from the Dave Meltzer community or not, they deserve those awards. But continue. Okay. All right. So um, I'll, 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 we could have an argument that. that yeah, we yeah. can. <laughs> okay. So uh, – so, so basically, now what you have is like, okay, when there's when situations arise where, where there's problems, okay, now, now they've had problems like, like this, this company's going on three years now next month. Like, I think we're four weeks away from the three year anniversary of their first show. And so they've been around a bit here, okay? Their first show, they did 1.4 million viewers, and they've never reached that number yet since then. So they had a large audience, you know, contributing like to, to, to viewing their, their content from the get go, right? But, but they haven't. They haven't capitalized on that. They've, they've kind of like leveled out of like right around above or b- above or below a million viewers. Okay. But when problems have arisen where you have problems with talent, you have problems with, you know, you know, talent, basically, you know, you're, you're bringing in guys from WWE and like, bro, they were hiring everybody. And like, supposedly like, we don't, we don't know this for a fact. Okay. Let like, me, let me add a little context to this because this right. is where I think people don't understand what being an EVP or even being in a bookie meeting. So when you get into the wrestling business, all you're thinking about is what can I do to get a push? So you're thinking about your gear. You're thinking about your body. You're thinking about moves. You're thinking about catchphrases. You're thinking about all the political stupid games you have to play when you're in wrestling because that's all it is is a lot of games that are unnecessary. Am I wrong so far, Disco? Okay, so now you've gone from this person who has no idea who you're wondering as a wrestler, who gets pushed, why do they get pushed, why am I getting pushed, to now you're in that position. Now you've got to figure out, do I push a guy that even though he's very talented, he's always late, he's hard to deal with, when you want to put him with other wrestlers, you know, you know, it's like pulling teeth or do i want to go with this wrestler who may not be as talented but anything you tell him to do he's going to do and other wrestlers don't understand that you know um you know am i going to use this wrestler who right now i'm negotiating with but he may leave in three or four months because he still hasn't signed his contract because he's not sure if he's ready to sign or not do i keep pushing him because I think I'm going to sign him or do I got to stop him? Because if I keep pushing him, he may show up the next day on my, you know, uh, I made, I made it more marketable for their right, show. Right. right. You know, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like the Malachi black with WWE thing where they gave him all the vignettes and then he just left and went to WWE off their, their vignettes and went to AEW. Like, you know, right, it's like, right. like you know, so, right. okay. you're in the middle, you're in the middle of a good program with somebody. And one of the two guys is showing up drunk for work. So now do you stop this program? And don't tell the people because you don't want to embarrass the guy. And you got to stop this program midstream that was going to get hot and make you some money. And the people are wondering, what the f- happened there? Or do you talk to the guy and continue and hope he gets better? There's so many. There's guys, as we see, there's guys that don't like each other, you know? Right. And so you've got all these things that are a normal wrestling fan, well, why aren't they pushing this guy? Why aren't they pushing this guy? Those are some of the reasons that you don't know and you will never right. f- no, right. you know, you never, if you, when, that's you, why when you try to come on here or these places that try to like the experts, you don't know. 
And I don't give a somebody from the inside is talking to you. There's still like an inner circle of information that only two or three or four people are privy to that not even that person who's giving you the information knows unless they're one of the three or four people in that circle. Right. So AEW's had some, you know, issues of, you know, we're not going to get involved, but like just a, just a per, per, per example, like when you talked about like the, the, this, when I just thought about this, when you talk about a guy shows up drunk and he's a like, bro, like John Moxley was one of their top performers, like on top of it. And all of a sudden he showed up for work and they, Hey bro, I got to go to rehab for drinking. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, bro, that, that, that gets dumped in your lap as a, like, you know, right. okay. And you've never, like, you have no experience in this business. Right. I'm like, oh, how, how do I handle it? I got him. Maybe, you know, this guy's a bit, this guy's a billionaire. So right. he has a level of confidence and his ego is kind of like, you know, in that person of like the people that make way more money than other people or have more money than other people. It's like, like, how does that affect like your psyche? Like, I, I don't want to be embarrassed in the public sphere, but how do I handle this? Right. So now what you do is like, you know, you're, you're a fan. You've been fans of professional these guys over the years. Cause you're from the you know wrestling community. And like, you're a smart Mark. You've been, you've been fan. You're a fan of CM Punk. Okay. And you know, you get wind. That CM Punk is itching to get back in the professional wrestling business, right? And but there was it was interesting because but he wasn't at the beginning, bro. Because I no, 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 I'm, I'm fast forwarding because we can okay. bro, we can do the history of AEW. I'm yeah. just gonna I'm just gonna like give give yeah, you yeah, basic yeah. context of where they're coming. You know, right, these right. guys were going to make mistakes. They're not experienced. And right. Cody and I even told them. I told the young bucks when they took over. I don't know. I don't know if I told Nick or the other guy, Matt. I go, bro, your life's are really about to change. You have no yeah. idea the level of politics and here about the face. Absolutely. So, and like you know, they they've had like issues, you know, correctable stuff. You know, you've heard these stories. Guys aren't happy, but but you're not going to make everybody happy. That's just that, that's just congruent with the history of professional wrestling. Like the locker room is never going to be completely happy. You're going to have guys that are upset. They're not getting pushed, whatever, right? So now you start bringing in you know other guys. And, you know, you're paying them exorbitant amount of money. And it's like, you're kind of thinking like they, 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 that locker room's got, they, they've hired a lot of guys. And like, I saw one of the tweets from like one of these chicks. I don't know. I it's so funny when the stuff happens, like you see blue checkmark wrestling media people. I've never heard of these people before. Uh-huh. Like so some of these girls that are like, dude, I'm like, who, who are these people? Like, you know, and like I say, well, well, one thing you got to like understand is like, did Tony and the Bucks and Young Bug and Kenny Omega, they have to be given credit and respect for a lot of these people would never have jobs if, they, if it wasn't for them. And it's like, well, you know, I've been in the business for years. And like, that may be one of your problems is that you've hired too many guys. You've given too many people jobs. It's like, and you think that like, that just by giving them jobs, that's making them happy. No, that's not going to make everybody happy. Because professional wrestlers are still kind of ego maniacs at heart. They're still performers, and performers are well, they not even ego. Uh, even though, even though they're ego maniacs, but you're also, you know, you know, you only have a short window, right? So you, so, so the 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 thing of like that's a positive is like, well, maybe we hire too many people, you know. So now you're bringing in a guy like Punk, and it, I'll, I'll never forget this, but because remember when we, I think we when we first started using Billy on our show, and he was telling the story. About how the Punk Fox, you know, going back to WWE thing was going to go down, but didn't go down, right? And I don't know if you remember this, but like, I'd, I'd be funny if, if we could get Husey, Joe, if you could t- t- tell Husey, maybe try to find that clip, but we'll put it up on well, YouTube, ba- like in retrospect, yeah, because it's very, very telling. Fox, okay? Fox was happy having Punk on that uh, post show, but they wanted him back in the ring, and WWE said no. Right. Basically, right. That they wanted they the Fox brought Punk back into the fold of WWE on that show because they had a lot of marks for Punk in that company at Fox, and they wanted to get Punk back on WWE television. And I'm I'm not sure if you can correct me this. I think Punk was will the Fox was willing to pay the salary for Punk to go back at WWE, and but WWE could give him the the burn around, eh, maybe oh no, and then they just basically said, "Dude, we don't want this guy in our locker room." Right. Okay, and like so, he did, and it just the the the, the business relationship went off, and like you know, whatever hands free, Punk is not going to be a member of WWE because they don't want him in the locker room, right? That and that was the gist of that story. So now let's fast forward. Here's CM Punk. You know, he comes back. It's been a year now, and like he got on TV and stuff, and then and like you know, I you know, he's basically doing what he wants wanted to do on TV. They gave him free reign, and it was underwhelming. You know, like it is kind of like you know, we we talked about this like. He's wrestling Lee Moriarty. He's trying to elevate guy, you know, but, but it's not working. It's not. It's not resonating with the fans, right? 
so now he's like supposed he's he's basically uh he him and Adam Page are going to go into to a paper like the, he's going to fight for the title finally. Him and Adam Page, and Page basically cuts the from punks the baby face, and Punk is being brought in because, bro, the first night when he get back, what was a pop like for him? Oh, it's incredible. Like it's a generational yeah. pop. Yeah, okay, and the so building like, sold you know, out. Okay, so, the building sold so out like based on the rumor that he was returning, too. Remember and that. You, so you can't ignore, in this wrestling business today, in this this fan base, or anything, Punk is a very strong brand to the wrestling fans. Like, he resonates very well like with this audience, you know? But, sidebar, it was Chicago. And I'm going to, when we fast forward, this, you know, it, it, is, it is Chicago. And, you know, I, I talked to a person in professional wrestling today. Like, you know, we, we were discussing, like, you know, in, in the in the history of punk, when you look back at his career, like well, what will his career be? It's like, well, he's obviously a generous of talent, but 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 my thing was like maybe in the history books he's gonna be like what well, punk was to Chicago, Jerry Lawler was to Memphis. Like the guy was super over in Chicago, but like how did the rest of the country really feel about the guy? No, I don't believe that. No, 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 no. But you can throw it out there. Let me throw this back. Okay. This is not just he's over in Chicago. He's over just about anywhere he goes. Okay. But more TV so, was but, well because he's from Chicago, yeah, dude. Okay, right. If you go to New York, you're gonna get a big pop because everybody knows you're from New York. If I go to Mexico City or you know or any Mexican like place where there's a lot of Mexicans, I'm going to get a huge pop because of who I've represented in wrestling. Right. You know, I may not get a bigger pop in Alabama, but right. I will get one in Alabama because Absolutely. everybody was going, Orale, arriba la raza, and they didn't even know what the it meant. Right, right. Yeah. But, but, but AEW is capitalized on the Chicago thing Enormously, well, well, I would a, do the they same have a lot thing. of shows there. Okay, that's right. right. Did they keep him? It's yeah, your hottest market, right? Yeah, yeah. and, and Disco, him, but real quick, real quick. There, so why not keep hot? Here they, they've yeah. been hot in Chicago since All In pre Punk. They always have used Chicago. Right. You know what I mean? Before right, Punk right. too. But I'm gonna say, but like, it's the, extra. It's ex, It's a little extra gravy when you've got the hometown right. boys also yeah, from sure. Chicago in that's a hot market. So, so it's kind of like it's you've 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 done a good job of sticking like presenting him in that market because he's always going to get a reaction. Right. All right. So he goes. Uh, he goes on TV. You know, him and him and Adam Page have a have a verbal confrontation, and we didn't think much about it at the time. But Adam Page basically said, "You know, I'm not. I'm not defending that. You know, the AEW title gets you know from you. I'm defending the AEW locker room from you." Punk took incredible offense to that. We found out later because when Punk had a chance to go on, you know, when he won the belt and he came on TV and Adam Page wasn't on or wasn't there. He basically called him out for a rematch or something like that and like called him out and basically said, Hey, here's a word of advice. The receipt, you know, if the, the, the disrespect, you know, if you cut the promo, the, you know, the, the, the receipt for the disrespect is going to be as strong as the disrespect was to me. Punk was really offended at that. Right. Mm-hmm. So now let's fast forward. Punk beats Moxley for the title. Okay. And <clears throat> when Punk cut that promo, Yo, then Punk was mad at Alvarez and Meltzer for this. Okay, yeah. I mean, we'll see, see in the scrum, but like you know, the word was that there was some stuff going around. Like the the we heard the the, the dirt sheets were reporting. You know what I mean? Like uh, he wasn't supposed to say that. Um, they did. They did. They said he definitely wasn't supposed to. say They did not know he was supposed to say that. And there was rumors that he that the reason that Cole Cabana wasn't with the Dark Order anymore, basically wasn't on TV anymore, and basically dismissed to, to Ring of mm-hmm. Honor was because that Punk didn't want him around, right? So Punk wins the title. Okay, can I we... say something Go before ahead. you can hold that thought? You also got to remember, when you're a star, where you're the, whether you're a star in Hollywood or whether mm-hmm. you're a star in wrestling, those are the type of mo- power moves you can make. You yep. can say, I don't want to work with this guy, and the mm-hmm. promoter will say, okay, you won't work with this guy, just like The Rock doesn't want to work with Diesel or Ben Diesel or it's whatever. It's not the... creative right. control, but it is creative control. Right, you're but, over. but right. for example, if you're if you're a director and Rock says I'm not going to work with Vin Diesel, are you going to say, "Whoa, well, you either work with him or you don't"? Or you want the Rock, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, totally. So you could yeah. do the same thing in wrestling, and right. wrestlers do do it. Like when Hogan would bring Brutus to every promotion he was in, and his people, and that's how it works. You you when you get over to a, to an extent, a degree, you earn the right. To get the perks, right? Right. Okay. That's why Cutler's with the Young Bucks and Nakazawa's right. with and Right. Dude, so they, I yeah. don't know who Jericho has, but it lashed to Luke. Well, who's that guy? That, no, no, oh, no. Dr. No. Luther, Jericho. Jericho. Oh, right. Dr. Yeah. Luther, yeah. Luther, Luther, Dr. Luther. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's, let's – so, so Punk has been getting some negative press 
leading into this match. Okay. But him and Moxie did great mic work on TV, you know, beforehand. Like they, they right. sold it. That we could always get good stuff, you know, figure, okay, whatever. Punk goes over. Okay. Punk, I, the, the best way I could describe it, like, so punk, you got the video ready, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Punk walked into that media scrum and you could tell with absolute contempt for the, for the dirt sheet guys. Right. Okay. And that, and that, that's what, what we get right off the bat here. Okay. Because he knows he's been, he knows he's coming in. He knows he's winning. He knows he's a Chicago, you know, something, but he knows, okay. And that media scrum, all these dirt sheet guys there. I can't wait to get this off my chest. Cause you guys have been stirring up some shit about me for the past few weeks. Nobody's called me. I want to get this off my chest. All right. So let's, 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 let's go with how this starts. Just say your name and you're cool. Hi, uh, Nick House with Wrestling Inc. I'll uh, start, Nick. <laughs> um, show of hands, who here fancies themselves as a journalist? You're a journalist, Nick? All right. I try my best. Okay. Um, um, no, real, real quick. Go ahead. Um, you still do improv? Uh, no, not a little bit. No? No. When you did improv, who'd you do improv with? Uh, I did it with uh, uh, Scott Colton. Hmm. Okay, so you fancy yourself a journalist. Would you say you're friends with Scott Colton? Uh, no, I haven't talked to Scott in some time. Mm-hmm. So you're not friends with him? Uh, no, no, Scott and I do not see eye to eye. Oh, wow. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> My point is, if you fancy yourself a journalist, even if it's for the silly world of professional wrestling, and you have journalistic integrity, people who report things, mostly that are <laughs> and slanderous lies against myself, if you are friends with somebody, you blew my spot. If you're not friends with them, I apologize. It's okay. But you should probably disclose who you're friends with. I'm not. I just want to say real quick, another interesting part is if you watch Tony's, as he's reacting, like, oh, Yeah, you, know, you have to watch it. Cringing and everything. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, he's petrified. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I haven't had anything to do with Scott Colton in almost a decade. He know, he know, know, wait, let me just say this. I love the part where he goes, you blew my spot, because he yeah, wanted him he wanted to, to say, say he was, he right, right, right. And I like how Tony's thinking, uh oh, private punk just turned public, <laughs> and people sure. are right. going to see what I deal with. Right. What yeah, can I exactly. do now? It's exactly. About sh- sh- just to, sh- just got real. Yeah. Go ahead. Immediately, because as right. punk said, I'll start this. Right. right. <laughs> right. He took the f- over, right? Because he wanted Nick House to say, "Oh, you're a friend of punk." It's like, okay, right. well, you you're you're reporting this stuff because he's your friend. Right. Is what the, the point he was trying to make? But right. But what? He still made it. He still right. made Go it. Ahead. Still made the point. Go ahead. Than that, it's. A f- unfortunate that I have to come up here and speak on this when I'm on my time and this is a business Uh, why I'm a grown ass adult man and I decide not to be friends with somebody is nobody else's business but my friends if I fall backwards will catch me Scott Colton I felt never would have my problem was I wanted to bring a guy with me to the top that did not want to see me at the top Okay, you call it jealousy, you call it envy, whatever the f*** it is. My relationship with Scott Colton ended long before I paid all of his bills. I have every receipt, I have every invoice, I have every email. I have the email where he says, and I quote, I agree to go our separate ways. I will get my own lawyer and you do not have to pay anymore. That's an email that I have. The only reason the public did not see is because When I finally had to counter sue him through discovery, we discovered he shared a bank account with his mother. That's a fact. And as soon as we discovered that fact and we subpoenaed old Marsha, he sent the email, oh, can we please drop all this? Now, it's 2022. I haven't been friends with this guy since at least 2014, late 2013. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't manage a target, and they spread lies and 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 put into a media that I got somebody fired when I have all to do with him, want nothing to do with him, do not care where he works, where he doesn't work, where he eats, where he sleeps. And the fact that I have to get up here and do this in 2022 is embarrassing. And if y'all are at fault, f- you. If you're not, I apologize. But what did I ever do in this world to go, to deserve an empty-headed, f- dumb f- like Hangman Adam Page to go out on national television and f- 
go into business for himself. For what? What did I do, Dave? What did I ever do? You tell me. Didn't do a goddamn thing. What's your name, sir? Dominic D'Angelo. Pittsburgh Penguins. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Pittsburgh. <laughs> I made it really clear in Forbes, and I just want to make it clear again. Nick, it's when... not his position to make it very clear. There's people who call themselves EVPs that should have known better. It's none of their business. I understand sticking up for your friends. I get it. I stuck up for that guy more than anybody. Okay? I paid his bills until I didn't, and it was my decision not to. Yeah, but I shouldn't have no commented when Nick first said it. It's my I, fault, and I if I hadn't, it's my that. fault. It's my I fault. appreciate it. I that, should have just I'm, taken a head on because you never but said But I'm trying to run a business, and when somebody who hasn't done a damn thing in this business jeopardizes the first million dollar house that this company has ever drawn off of my back and goes on national television and does that, it's a disgrace to this industry, it's a disgrace to this company. Now, we're far beyond apologies. Right? I gave him a f chance. It did not get handled, and you saw what I had to do, which is very regrettable, lowering myself to his f level. But that's where we're at right now. And I will still walk up and down this hallway and say, if you have a f problem with me, take it up with me. Let's f go. What's your question, Nick? Uh, uh, first of all, you're Pause it. What's your question, Nick? <laughs> Bro, when you're watching this. <laughs> At least he was polite. <laughs> when you're watching this, I, I, bro, I feel, I feel bad for Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how could you? Because not? he's like, because like, dude, it's like this guy. He's like, I, I bought a wrestling cup, and I say, bro, Punk, did you, Punk, Punk, Punk? One of Punk's lines is, I'm trying to run a wrestling. I'm trying to yeah. run a business. And the other one, Di, was he's, he's like, trying to sound like he's in charge. He said to Tony, he's like, missing Tony, cut him off. This nut, like, bro, he acts like he is in charge here. Yeah, he caught him off and he said, Which it's, it's not your position to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, isn't it, though? Isn't everything his position? Bro, the, the funniest thing about this, the, the first exchange here, is that, like, you know, uh, let me ask you a question. Because this this begs thing, that that exchange right there, Conan, you're, you're Tony Khan. How do you handle that right, right well, there? Well, the thing is, is that there's two ways of looking at it. There's one way is how we interpreted it and maybe how he meant it. When I mm -hmm. first heard it, I go, that's pretty narcissistic. That ain't your company but maybe he means i'm running the business of cm punk and you just right. up cm punk's yeah. business right by right, going right. out no, there and railroading me without telling me right you, 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 that, you, if he did right. that to me right. if he did that to me if hangman page did that to me if he did it to somebody like nash if he did it to somebody like jericho you know we'd give him a receipt right so you went out there and you tried to get funny with punk and there's your receipt and another right, thing, right, like a, yeah. little, a little speculation, but maybe this is another thing that was sticking in Punk's craw, is since all these reports have come out and since he went back at Page and stuff, the crowd response has changed some. There's a, there's a little more right. booze, you know what I mean? And they were chanting for well, MJF last night. We're going to yeah. good. Maybe he'll turn heel. That's a better Punk for me. Yeah. We're going to get to that. All right. Because right. um, there's, there's more stuff. All right. So, but like, uh, but right there is like, you know, trying to watch two things because Punk is very passionate. He's being certainly Punk. You know, he's just telling Bro, that's the one thing that's gotten this that's gotten this guy over, and the one thing that gets our podcast over. We speak our mind. We're not we're not afraid to say anything if it's on our mind. Like I'm not going to be scared. Like you know, so so, so we're getting like a good raw punk, right? Tony, and, and not Tony. only that, it's 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 refreshing in this political world, in the wrestling world, in just your normal life with all the wokeness and all the PC. Everybody dances around the actual issue. Nobody wants right. to offend anybody. To hear somebody say what they really feel and you got to think let's just say for argument's sake because nobody knows except him and tony i guess that he had nothing to do with coke cabana he's getting tired of hearing he had something to do with it when he had nothing to do with it you know like right. when people misquote you and you get on the show and you go read the whole article that's not what i said right. nobody wants to be painted in a negative light so if he has nothing to obviously has disdain for coke cabana but maybe right. he has nothing to do with. Maybe Tony said, you know what? I know this guy hates him. I'm going to keep him apart. I'm going to put him on Ring of Honor. Let's yeah. just exactly. say right, right. this guy's exactly. tired of hearing the and nobody ever caught. And these and these um, dirt sheet writers that the majority of them have no journalistic integrity. He's correct. Have no training. They just right. got into the business because they were a fan. Right. And now they think they know it all. This was some CM Punk's you to all of them. So right. I loved it. Right. So, and, and then too, is like, you know, like the, the point he's trying to make there is like, dude, 
like you could say that like because the optics are bad, the punk, the Colt Cabana's around, Colt's friends with everybody that that I think what he was trying to reiterate there is like I did not tell Tony Khan to get rid of Colt Cabana. Right. Uh, so so you know, if Tony Khan wanted to do it, you know, but but I did I had f- all with that. Basically, because right. I don't, that's not my decision. And is, I think he wanted, I think that's the point he was trying to make because the reports were punk, because we had talked about it, speculated. Did, 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 punk, because people's mailbag question were, did punk get rid of like, did, you know, and he's trying to basically say there's, okay, like, hey, look, I didn't, you know, me and I'm not friends with Cole Cabana. We have solar heat. Very nice. I did not tell this guy to get rid of the guy, right? Right. Okay. So let's keep going here. From you before he okay. came out, obviously confronted you, uh, punk. Um, why now? Why, why, why is MJF back in the fold now? How do you both feel about him being around? How do you feel about the time he spent away? All of that. Well, if I may, I'm the one who asked him to come back because uh, MJF's a big star in this company and this is a, one of the biggest events. A year ago, CM Punk debuted here and I thought it was right for the fans. And like I said, for the fans, I thought the best thing that we could do as a company was bring MJF back. And- he wants me to work with pricks constantly. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, two of the top wrestlers in the world, MJF and CM Punk, could be oh. a big match down the line. Sorry to keep bringing this up, but I've never spoken his word, and I don't know how long, so I'm a little pissed off about it. That's fine. When it came down that he was going to sue me, I asked to talk to him. He refused. I asked for mediation. It was denied. I offered him money. He said it was not enough. He went ahead with the lawsuit and sued. It's his funeral. I don't care. He shares a bank account with his mother. It tells you all you need to know about what kind of character that is. You are always Just there. pause real quick, Joe. I appreciate pause it, Nick. I'm sorry if I'm a little nippy. Just fine. Now, mind you, he's talking about a guy that Tony Khan is employing. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> right. So confess for Okay, go, go put play. I'm hurt and I'm old and I'm tired. I totally and I work with children. I respect your situation. I regret not answering your question and the first I time only asked, asked it because I have some familiarity and just wanted some clarification on the story. Yeah, I, didn't break I the should story. have just taken a head on like I did with Blake and Forbes recently. We're all learning here, Tony. It's okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. This is from Mindy's Press Bakery, pause. by the way. Pause. Oof, uh, bro, <laughs> that line right there, we're all... He, <laughs> But bro, Puck is like just the alpha mailing yes, Tony Khan right yes, now. Yes, just and it's just like I feel bad for Tony because like, bro, this this guy no, he's bro. Tony Khan's the first guy that's, that's decided these media scrums would be a good idea, oh. right? And they've been all happy because all these marks, these these journalists, these you know, that are just asking him softball questions all the time. All of a sudden now, Punk got in the room is like, I got some I want to talk about. So go ahead, right. It's a great place in Chicago if you like pastries and baked goods. I suggest you go there. They're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, though. <laughs> Sorry about all that, man. It's okay. All right, thanks. So I've asked questions of presidential candidates in my old life. I don't think I've ever been as nervous as I am right now. But press I'll, I'll pause there. Press pause there. Did you hear what that guy said? Yeah. The, 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 the dirt sheet guy said, I've never been this nervous before. He's yeah. going to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. Um, you saw the reaction MJF got when he came back out at the end of the night. Do you have any worries that um, he was cheered in Chicago while CM Punk, hometown guys, you you press, worries press about, pause again. Punk don't try, like to re- he, try to rewind. He don't like that. MJF either. Bro, he doesn't like, like Tony. Why do you see this? Watch him look at when he yeah, shakes his head. Look at the way he looks, and but looks at Tony. With disdain. Life. I don't think I've ever been as nervous as I am right now, but I'll, I'll direct this one to Tony. Um, you saw the reaction MJF got when he came back out at the end of the night. Do you have any worries that uh, <laughs> he was cheered in Chicago while CM Punk, hometown guys, do you have any worries about um, MJF kind of, he got pure moves before. He was one of the last pure heels left in wrestling and didn't try to get cheered. And now he's sort of set up as this anti-authority figure. Do you, do you worry about what that means for the psychology going forward, especially as it's going to take I think the fans want to see great wrestling matches. MJF's the top wrestler. CM Punk's the world champion, the top wrestler in the world. And I think having the top contenders, whoever came out of this match tonight, MJF sets up as a great challenger. And now CM Punk uh, is the world champion. MJF being back. A lot of fans were excited to see it, but anytime somebody makes a comeback in the world of wrestling, generally you get a really big reaction. Am I worried about it? No, not really. Like we have one of the most charismatic, popular professional wrestlers in the world right here. And frankly, the fans can react however they want. That's what's great about AEW and pro wrestling. We're not trying to tell people what to think. 
This is a really compelling story. People were emotionally moved. People are calling that a great ending, and I'm really glad people liked it. But the fact is, it was a great match, and it was a great ending, and now we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Is that going to headline Arthur Ashe? All right, let me just say something real quick. You know what I'm actually seeing here, too, also? You got to remember two things, and, like, when you're breaking down things, I think the further... Uh, you know, the, the more layers you peel, the more you can understand the dynamic. We're talking about a, he's like 33 years old or something like this, uh, uh, Tony. Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. Who probably grew up for most of his life with money, you know, maybe had some maid, chauffeurs, like that, you know, college educated, has to work in the political world, ec of the NFL and the Premier League, and, you know, all these banquets and that rich people go to. So he's already very well learned in the fine art of diplomacy, right? Mm -hmm. Against a guy who's a punk rocker and punk rockers by nature don't give a f right? Counterculture type of guy who took that counterculture and brought it to wrestling. So you're basically giving a guy who don't give a f on the mic with another guy who believes in complete diplomacy. I think that's right. what we're seeing here. Yeah. yeah. Tony he's trying to be she, he, she's trying to Right. He's, he's trying, trying to, to do best. these scrums like he's trying to run these scrums like they've been run before. Right. And Punk is just not having anything no. to do with right. it right now because Punk has the punk all rocker, the dirt the shit rebel people in, in front yeah. of him and he wants to like it. Right. he's basically saying, Okay, all the shit you guys have written about me, I'm getting my sh I'm getting my receipt on you guys now because right. you're all here. All right, so go ahead. And t Tony's actually going to be 40 next month, so he's a little bit older. Okay, 40. Yeah. He's young. He looks he, 40? He looks like he's, he's, gonna looks like he's 33. Yeah. Wow, he looks young. Can I comment on it? You don't know. Oh, thank you. I'll tell you why I'm upset about it because <laughs> if you're an EVP, you don't try to middle your top baby face. Try to get your niche audience that's on the internet to hate him for some made up <laughs> rumor. Really pisses me off. Stepping on your own <laughs> trying to you know, make money, sell tickets, fill arenas. And these stupid guys think they're in receipt it. Tom? Yep. Dominic D'Angelo at freeshows.com. Uh, Punk, last time we were here last year, I asked you about, like, Terry Funk and his influence, like, yeah. the legacy going on. Kind of, uh, and this is for you too, Tony. I kind of like, they're, they're, you do, you've done a great job with incorporating legends throughout, you know, the course of AEW and as it goes on. I kind of want to see... Uh, what you feel about how a lot of the modern talent today can kind of utilize some of the advice and take advice from like guys like William Regal and uh, even like Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone. Um, I know I'm missing Jake Roberts, plenty I'm missing, I'm sure. But I just kind of want to get both your perspectives on that and how that can kind of go a little bit more to, to help you guys out grow as a company. We have a, uh, a locker room full of pretty brilliant minds, you know, Jerry Lynn, Dean Malenko, Mark Henry. You know, I, when I came back and I cut my promo my second week here, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty decent, you know what I mean? I kind of blurred the lines a little bit. What's he doing? How crazy Phil. He's going into business for himself, and really I was just defending myself. But, you know, you, you, you mix that in with attacking Moxley and mention, um, you know, Kingston being the second best Kingston, which is a pretty great line. Um, you know, uh, but our locker room, for all the wisdom and brilliance it has, isn't worth when you have an empty-headed idiot who's never done anything in the business do public interviews and say, no, I don't really take advice. Uh -huh. Who the f*** do you think you are? You know? That's stupid. I'm on a team with Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, and I, I, don't, need to, I don't need to work on my swing. You don't, I'm not going to listen to these guys. They're going to tell me how to swing a baseball. Go f*** yourself. That's how I feel about it. For the, uh, for, I'm sure a lot of listeners are, whatever. For those who aren't, that was also referring to an Adam Page interview he did, where he said he doesn't, he doesn't really listen to advice. So that was a receipt Bro, for he that. Can't, he, like, when I was watching this, all right, and I'm listening to that, I'm like, bro, this is like next level stuff if they fight again, you know. But bro, I'm just kind of like that. This guy's like. But let me let me just say this because in a minute I'll get to to where I do think Punk is wrong, but um, it's just funny because. I was talking to somebody in AEW in the locker room, and I won't say the name, but um, who's been in the business a long time, a long time, and is respected by everybody. And they were complaining to me that, and he's not, and it's actually a she, and it's not the, and it's not the 
first person or the last person that's told me that a lot of people in today's generation, unlike ours, and probably unlike CM Punk's, including CM Punk, bro, they just don't want to hear it. They think they know it all. They think because, you know, they, 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 they want shortcuts. They don't want to work. You know, they don't want to put in the time that has to be put in. And they just feel entitled. And imagine CM Punk that, you know, he probably grew up and we know this, you know, sleeping, you know, five guys in a room and, you know, these long hour f car rides that you had to do back then and all the he went through. And, uh, you know, and for somebody to say, I don't take advice, you know, of course, he's going to get hot because you should always be seeking advice. This is not an easy job. This is an art. And it takes at least, and I said this before, 10 years to learn it. I don't give a who you are. I, I dare you to say that this Terry Funk's face. I don't need to listen to you, Mr. Funk. I know what I'm doing. Grow up. Next question over here. Question for Funk. I'm sorry, speak up. What? So we can't hear you. All right. Um, question for CM Funk, uh, Bill Lindsay from Leach Report. Um, I think you caught a lot of people by surprise your loss two weeks ago, and your foot injury came into play, and I wonder, you know, how much of that came into play tonight? Because a lot of fans would assume that that was part of the reason you lost, but that didn't seem to happen tonight. Um, I'm wearing Dan Housen's boots. It's a true story. Press pause, press pause. So, I... I Bro, now, okay, <laughs> this is a room full of journalists, right? And he is saying a lot of stuff here that would obviously ignite a follow-up question. Like, to the, you know, bro, it's like, you know, right, bro, this the guy police, asked him about the his report, foot. Asked, how, how, does your foot how, how does your foot feel in the match? Bro, right. almost, almost nobody <laughs> follows up until Tony's on his own later on. Someone finally asked right. a question about it. But. Well, yeah, you can okay, so, fast forward this part yeah, about the boot. This, this was very... Yes. Uninteresting. Right. Let's see where we are. This question is actually directed towards Punk. Uh, we saw, you know, you got a huge win tonight. Congratulations. And also MJF return. What is the message that you're trying to direct towards MJF this time around? Because you did have a feud with him months ago. And, I mean, do I have to? I, I, I guess, uh, I don't know. I'm tired of wrestling these pricks. <laughs> I'm tired of wrestling these kids that think they, uh, they know everything. Um, you know, but um, I'm not. I'm not the boss. I uh, he won the num number one contendership, and uh, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, I, I think Max is uh, a, a supremely talented individual, um, but this goes for him and anybody else in the locker room that doesn't want to be here. You know, the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it, and Max likes to uh, you know. Where he eats instead of water in the grass, so yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see how that goes. Thanks, Izzy. Press pause, bro. So I was when this thing was over, I was going to make a point that no, that, that everybody was wrong here, right, bro? That line right there when he said the guilt, you know, he's he's your where you should be watering the grass, bro. That's what he's doing right now. Like he's literally he's criticizing MJF by doing exactly what he's criticizing MJF for right right now in front of everybody. Do you, do you agree with that, Conan? Well, yes, but here's the thing: he's you know, first of all, if you notice, Tony's agreeing with him. So he's, he's nodding. Knows, I, I think it's who, nervous. I think it's a yeah, nervous like, nod. Yeah, Could yeah. be, but who yeah, knows? Yeah. Who knows if MJF, who I love to death, love to death, if he didn't go in there and make some crazy demands and go, you're nothing without me or, you know, whatever, who knows? And maybe Punk was in the room or he actually told Punk and Punk said, really, he said that? We don't know, you know? Right. And so um, he is doing the same thing. But you also got to remember right now, he's very angry. Right. He's, he's not thinking about being right. He's lashing out. Right. That's he's what getting, he's doing. He's, he's venting. Everybody that me over everybody that thinks they're a big shot and you don't have the balls to come up in front of this microphone like i do and keep it real i'm gonna keep it real for you bro i love this interview <laughs> right, i absolutely it's, love it's, it it's fast it's, it's, as i said this is the third time i've watched it. it's fit yeah it's it's amazing it's an amazing experience like watch, yeah. watch it is because like because like basically what he's doing here is because this is the pump we wanted to see we didn't want to see all oh, shucks thank you for bringing me back and all here, this other per perfect example if I was like on a media scrub and I had like Bixen Span, Sean Ross Sapp, Ryan Satin, Meltzer, Kel like if I had all these guys in front of me for all the 
it's like they've said about me and their fans have said about me. I I would be like just as confident on the mic as punk is right now to get my to, 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 now, to get my receipt on there. Now, let you me ask you a question because I don't follow Bix and Span or none of these guys. No, 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 but let me ask you a question. But uh, Joe. Yes, sir. The only guy I follow is Meltzer, and I don't really remember how he treats punk. How does he treat punk? Uh, I'd say pretty well. Yeah, I, I don't okay. think uh, Dave Dave crosses the line with that at all, you know? All right. Pre- pre- pretty but, well, but Omega and Kenny or the Omega and the Umbas are Dave's voice. Dave voice. Yeah. Right. And punk is it's like a guy that, that Dave respects – is burying guys that he's close with. That is that is bro, right. it's so right. weird to me yeah. because Omega and the Young Bucks are like three of the nicest, non-confrontational, non-problem making, professional guys I've ever met in my career. I'm serious. Right. So yeah, go ahead. All right, let's keep going. John Adam podcast. He, uh, Punk, a, a year ago we were in this room and it was after Adam Cole had debuted, Brian Danielson had debuted. And you said that it, it had the feeling of Bash at the Beach, oh where where there was <laughs> that energy. That? It was that Did energy. Did I say that? And uh, <laughs> uh, a year later, here you are, world champion. Uh, through the trials and tribulations, what's your honest assessment of the last year for you personally, and professionally? That, um, that that that's a decent question. I, 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 and that yeah. that was Cause, yeah, yeah. Press pause because he's saying, hey, you know, you, you compared yourself to Bash at the Beach. Yeah. Here we are a year later. All right, we, you know, he's put him. Up. That's a, that was actually a good question. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like Ooh, again, the other guy. Sounds like a pretty ridiculous statement, you know. But I would like to think, in, again, in five years, you know, you'll 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 see the impact of it. Um, there's a chance I'm wrong. You know, we got an uphill battle in a, in a, in a lot of respects. Um, this is just so much drama and turmoil going on. But I, you know, I, I like to believe in the place I work. Um, we do have a very, very strong roster, and like I said, we have we have a lot of brilliant minds backstage. So if uh, if, if young talent's willing to actually listen and, and receive uh, advice and information, I honestly think the sky's the limit. You know, there's always going to be people who think they should be the top guy, want to be pushed. You know, um, and I get that. I mean, that was that was me from like 2008 to you know 2010 or whatever. And you know, I I, I, I always wanted more. Um, but I, I, I thought I acted like a top guy, you know, like if I missed a flight, I rented a car and made the town. I didn't just go, oh, I missed the flight. I guess I'm not going to be a TV. Um, can you stop it there? I think Adam Cole is, is, is. <clears throat> so as you notice, he keeps coming back to the same thing, okay. you know, as long as they're willing to take advice. Yeah. And this is what I'm hearing too. Okay. Yeah. So he does have a f- point. And he's probably bringing up, and he's not bringing up the name of some guy who didn't show up because he missed his flight. Right, which your typical been, like Gen Z or wrestler, right, maybe. Right, yeah. where there's oh, no way the that flight, would have right. happened. Even if we had to right. rent a car, brother. Right. We were making the f- town. Right. You had yeah. to. Right. You get heat. Right. They might take you off the road if like, there's and, no excuse. And from right? the boys too. Yeah. Because they're on the f- road. Yeah. yeah. All right. Go ahead. Fantastic. I'm, 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 I'm more worried about his health now than worried about if, if his impact on wrestling is going to be, you know, bigger than Scott Hall's or something like that. Like, I, I just want the kid to be healthy because he's a, he's a, he's a sweetheart, you know? Um, I know Eric Bischoff is really mad that I said that, so I stand by it. <laughs> uh, um, can you tell me a little bit about the recovery from the foot injury? That's Dave asking about the foot injury. Fast, you want, fast you forward, want to hear that part? This is okay. absurd. Yeah, yeah. Bro, was I, that Meltzer? That was Meltzer, yeah. Bro, yeah. Meltzer. Ma- Davey I'm Boy all... must have definitely been on gin and juice and Molly. Really, <laughs> that's mean, your question? He asked about how's his about recovery his went foot, for his right. ankle. Fast forward this, bro. Like, I, I, I couldn't Dave believe said, it. I want to ask something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just but, but, but just a little sidebar, a little sidebar here, okay? Dave and um and Brian on their when they they did their re- they recorded speaking about this yeah they weren't even going to go to the media scrum they were talking like they were just going to stop by to say hi right but then the sh- hit the fan right off the bat here and then like you know and, like he brought up they, so, so keep going because he brings up Alvarez too so, so go ahead I'm a little older now and it was just it was a pretty ridiculous I, I think if I was 23 legendary run for John Moxley he hasn't been defeated in a oh yeah oh yeah yeah okay just and... go backwards to just very, very briefly, could go backwards, like right there. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Last question for CM Punk. Will, next day. Will Washington, uh, Fightful. What up, Will? 
you okay, for press okay. pause real quick. Uh, I got this is the so so by look, look for, for 15 minutes, Punk has been on fire in this thing. Yeah, right. Dave from from okay, the Resident Observer and Fight Phil right now are like the two top dogs in the 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 the, 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 the wrestling media stuff. Fight Phil, yeah, Fight Phil. The Sean Sean Ross. They have they have a they, to they're the number one Patreon in wrestling. Yes, they're yes, the number right. one Patreon for wrestling content. Right? They do better than they, they do better than Observer. Yeah, really. For, yeah, like, for, oh, yeah, they yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Wow. They got bro. They got like five thousand Patreons. Yeah. Right. Um. What is what so, is the reason they have what is what is they get Denise Salcedo? They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're nerdy content. It's, yeah. it's right. the, the nerd culture. They they they're like the what culture people in England. Okay. They, they like Sean, they feed all the, the nerdy fans. But Sean right? drops news too. I think I think his fan base they kind of just like him. You know, it's like a buddy thing. Oh, I'll, I'll su- subscribe to the Patreon, you know, for that and for the news. Right. But so so Dave asked him how his ankle's going after all this that he's been saying. Right. Listen to what the guy from Fightful asked, Will Washington. So I guess a good way to round this out would be to point out the fact that uh, your win tonight brought to an end a fairly legendary run for John Moxley. He hasn't been defeated in AEW in over a year. And uh, even with the ones that right? out, um, he hadn't... Uh, I believe it was what double or nothing last year. The last time he was pinned, um, yeah, it was in a tag match. Yeah, he's tag. never. Yeah, it was the first time he's ever taken a clean pin in an AEW match ever. I would say. I mean, where it was under pretty fair circumstances <laughs> right. in over three years. Yeah, so it's, it, that brings to an end a fairly legendary run for John Moxley. Can you talk about um, what it means to be the guy to put an end to that run for Moxley? Oh, man, <laughs> people are probably really mad. <laughs> Bro, that's that's a legitimate like the guy that comes as a wrestling journalist asks him how it feels to end John Moxley's run as the champion. Uh, his undefeated streak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's my kazoo? Wait a minute. I don't think we've had a kazoo on talks. Right. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm yeah. I'm assuming Di, you want to get to the part where he confronts Alvarez a little bit, right? Well, just put, yeah, press play. There's only a couple right. minutes. Okay. Right. <laughs> Alvarez. Oh, there it is. Are you mad at me? <laughs> I'm mad at you. All right. I'm a little mad at you, but you know. um. That's the biggest reaction from Tony. Did you see it? I yeah, think me and the Ox are so similar, and obviously, uh, we got a lot in common. You know, like we both had some misdiagnosed staph infections. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a, it's a weird thing to have in common. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, but we came from the same place, and I think we felt a lot of the same things there, you know? Kind of like, there was a bridesmaid, but never the bride. I can only hope that he appreciates um, being able to, me doing that for him, just as I appreciate him doing this for me, you know? Because I think we're both guys that nobody ever really did it for us, you know? Uh, Guys could have helped us out a little bit more, passed the torch a little bit more. And I think we're on we're on even we're on an even footing. Whereas before, maybe you thought you know like I'm the bigger star. Like I'm here to try to elevate anybody, everybody. And I'm not saying that I have elevated John Moxley. I like to think maybe I did. I think that's what all of our jobs are: is to get you know if if one person's up here, it's 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 up to them to reach back and and get everybody up to that level. But yeah, I, I think I think John Moxley. Um, we have different philosophies about pro wrestling, but it's it's a beautiful thing because it's it's all pro wrestling, you know. And done right, it's it's just magic. I I, I think he's a hell of a talent, and I, uh, I I I sure do appreciate him. You know. Thank you very much, CM Punk. And let me Alvarez. let me just say one more thing. I'm a big believer in that philosophy that CM Punk, when you're a star, you need to bring as many people with you because most guys get to the top and they just think of themselves or their friends instead of thinking, how can I make everything around me better? That way I have rivalries and I have guys that can be my tag team partners. You know what I'm saying? So I love that mindset. That was, that was a, that's the end of it, by the way. All right. Well, he says yeah. something to Alvarez um, if you, you, don't want to, you don't want to see that. Okay, go ahead. I thought he already did. Uh-uh. He no, he's going to talk, talk to him, yeah. Alvarez. <laughs> you saw the video, man, and you were so incredulous that I went into business for myself, and I was just like, No, no, oh, man. I, I made sure to say that some people were upset that you had done that, and other people said that you were defending yourself, which is what you said, that you were defending yourself. I, and the reason I've never defended myself is because when you do, it just sounds like you're being defensive, but I've eaten on this subject for a very, very long time. Um, 
and it, I, I'm, I'm very sad today that I had to get up here and, and, and say his name. He doesn't f deserve it uh, and talk about it. But facts are facts, you know. Name two people that have made the most money off the name CM Punk. I don't think you're there yet. The first one's Vince <laughs> McMahon. The second one's Scott Colton. I hope you all have a good night. Please be more responsible with the news you get from certain people. And uh, just remember, we're human beings. Thank you. Okay, just real, real, real quick. Keep that picture up there. I thought it was funny that he pulled out those six cans and laid them out there. It's like, what are, isn't that funny? Like he's got the six cans and, go, like, and he didn't even drink any of them, right? That's, well, he drank, just, and, he, and then Tony takes right. one and stuff like so, that. Yeah. So let's wrap it up like how you would handle this. Okay, there's there's two two things. That, number one, well, should we talk before we ask how? I mean, I know you're asking Conan how he'd handle the press conference, but that's not the end of the story either. You know? What oh I mean? yeah, so they go they go in the back and the uh, I guess the, the Bucks heard all this and everything. Okay, but let me ask you a question. A what, 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 Did you what, know okay, this Conan? I, I want to hear like a what fight exa- back Yeah, I want to hear what exactly happened because I read it last night. And it said there was a melee. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself. The young bucks, bro. I can't ever imagine them being any sort of like altercation. There's nothing there, Joe. <laughs> there isn't. I know. I reflect. know. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, um, what they do? Uh, get Brandon Cutler's right, uh, spray no, no, no. can so and I, shoot and then spray them. Yeah. I, mean, I got well, a, obviously they had words. I got a full. No, I, got a full I, got a, I, got and, I got a full report here. So, and this has ahead. been from Meltzer's confirmed this in other spots, but this is from Fightful. And it says, uh, after CM Punk's AEW scrum where he buried Colt, the Young Bucks, Hangman Page, and, Hangman Page, and others, he returned backstage where an altercation occurred. The EVPs were still in the building, and we were told that there was numerous people that had to intervene. That's where the details get foggy. Wrestling Observer has noted that CM Punk started the issues by swinging at Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks. Punk's trainer, Ace Steel, was said to have been involved for most everyone we spoke with. Others note that Nick Jackson ended up getting rocked or knocked out and leaving him marked up after the fight. That ended up happening as a result of Ace Steel throwing a chair... According to numerous sources, Kenny Omega and Ace Steel were also said to have tussled with Steel allegedly biting Omega and grabbing him by the hair. Uh, we're told at least one of the coaches was very torn up about what happened right after Punk's scrum, a security guard darted backstage. There are several that we've spoken to that think there could be legal ramifications to the situation. There's also been reports that Chris Daniels and Pat, Bunk, Pat Buck were involved, which seemed to vary based on who you talk to, so we're not confirming as much. And there were several people that tried to de-escalate the situation. He also makes note that Eddie Kingston was suspended for a light physical altercation just you know for his uh problems with sammy so what are the results going to be here what should tony do kind of thing all right so like, when we get back to before he started playing this is that the, the, bro they got problems there big and everybody everybody like all of the, like everybody involved here is like just very very bad optics for for tony for the evps and for punk all the criticisms that people have said, like you know, that like you know, the, the you know Tony hiring those guys to r- help run the show, that they have no experience. We're seeing that to come for, to come fruition. CM Punk being a locker room cancer. We're seeing that come to fruition. We're seeing you know, bro, because like let me tell you something. What Punk just did right there, dude. If you're like, if you're AEW, you're trying to you want people to come work for you. You want to recruit talent. You want to recruit big stars. You want to, bro. Like he's basically like like telling everybody. Why would you come and work here? Horrible on his part. Bro, all of this stuff should not have been brought to light like this. If he had a problem with the EVPs, it should have been done behind closed doors with Tony aired out behind the scenes. He took it public. If he had a problem with, with Adam Page, behind closed doors with Tony, with the, everybody, let's just air this out. Let's get it done. He decided to go in front of the world basically because he had a because the, the dirt sheet guys were based that, that that's the gist of it, bro. It's like the dirt sheets antagonized him to the point that he had them all in a room together and could just not help it. I'm going to get my back on these guys at the expense of the company I work for, uh, bro. You got to say, I mean, if you're Tony Khan, you have to send the guy home. Oh, like man. the president's have been sending, you have to send him home. You have to, or, and then this is my thing. Okay. Like, that, you know, every once in a while, a golden opportunity comes up in professional wrestling to change the game, to like to do you know do stuff differently and everything. And I would just tell like Tony Khan, like I don't know who you're consulting with, right? But your EVPs right now and and Kenny and everything, they're in the middle of this. Whoever you've been consulting, if you talk to Dave and stuff, everything, he's in the middle of this. 
because he's the one that like basically greenlighted, hey, you should hire these guys to help you run the show and stuff. He's in the middle of this. Bro, you need to get outside the box and get advice from other people. And one of the you know, I'm not even like stroking his chain or anything here, but one of the first people you should you should talk to about hand, how to handle a situation like this is from somebody that's been on both sides of the spectrum when dealing with stuff like this is Conan. Because Conan buried the company publicly when he worked at WCW, talked to USA Today, and Conan, what did Eric do? How did Eric handle when you buried the company publicly? What, he what did he do? He suspended me. He suspended you. And was it fair? Yep. Yeah, it's kind of right. It's fair because you publicly buried the company, right? Right. Another person he should talk to or just you know, solicit advice. Bro, if you if you get a creative urge and like, you know, you're the number two company right now. You're in the same position that WWE was with WCW back when Brett and Sean had their thing and, and Brett spit in Vince's face. Vince Russo told me when he went back in the, the bookie meeting that next that, – that, that, that when after that happened, Cornette, Bruce Pert, all these guys, bro, they just wanted to – Swipe it under the rug. They wanted, like, you know, they, 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 and like Vince is saying, wait a second, this is all everybody's talking about. Let's turn this into business. Yeah. I would, I would talk, I would call, bro, if you want to figure if, if, if it's, you know, like this is an opportunity to possibly create, because, bro, there's going to be a lot of buzz on Wednesday night. The one thing Punk did is create interest for the show. Yeah. How you handle this could create interest for future shows and get you guys numbers. I would call Vince Russo and say, dude, how did how did that work? How did you guys like how did, how did you guys work your way out of that to create the, to create this business? I'm not saying make Tony Khan a Vincent main character, but like take a real shoot situation and try to extract try to make the, but bro, that, disco, that would be disco, my disco. They they spun they spun that situation off. Mm-hmm. Owen came back and wrestled Sean. They spun it into Austin versus McMahon. Of course, how do you spin this in a situation where these guys don't want to probably don't want to work together? Punk's already said about you figure, Paige. Brother, you, you're all under contract. Yeah. They can, you can work. Everybody knows how to work. That's the whole thing. Everybody knows how to work. They don't have to fight. Okay, maybe they want to fight, but when you step in that ring, there's people that, that bro, this has happened throughout her wrestling history. Yeah, guys edging, don't like each other. Matt Hardy. You work. You know. You, you right. You go and work. There, bro, I, I'm so gonna, what, What's your take? I want to hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you the, a good example that we brought up on the show, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Okay. Um. Everybody in wrestling knows people that haven't gotten along. And everybody knows in Mexico and even outside of Mexico, because I always found it very weird that Americans would know this because I've actually had American wrestlers ask me, how much heat do you have with Vampiro? Right. And I'm like, well, well, a lot. So we had a lot of heat in Mexico uh, to the point where we actually got into a fight in L.A. in a dressing room once. And so. Well, you fist fuck. You actually had a fist fight with him. Right. I did not. I did not know that. I think yeah. it's just always had just heat. Yeah, interesting. And so he. Um, uh, 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 so when I came, so when he was booking in AAA, and I came back and I took his place, one of the things he tried to do because he thought that he was going to come back somehow, some way, is he had like his people, almost like what happened with Eric Bischoff and uh, uh, when Russo came in. Remember when Russo came in that a lot of people wouldn't pay attention to him or right, listen right. to him. They were yeah, the J.J. Dillon and those, they, 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 right. the click started for, right, right. Right, because they thought, well, Eric will come back, and either way we're going to make life miserable for this guy. So he had a whole bunch of guys he was pushing, and they were not paying attention to me, and they were not listening to what I was saying, and they, it was really a bad situation. He divided the locker room, and he was still, while he was working there in other capacity, he was still in wrestler's ears, okay? So... That was my first point of contention with him. So what I did is I just ended up getting rid of almost all the people that worked for him. So that that problem was was relinquished. Then Vampiro stayed on working in the gorilla position, working as a commentator and working as an agent. As an agent, he wasn't I have very high standards and he wasn't meeting those standards. I took him off an agent. So, of course, him and everybody that hates me and likes him. Oh, it's because Conan doesn't like him. Okay. No, that wasn't the reason. If he would have done his job, he'd still be there. Then you saw, I don't have to tell you, you saw what he did on commentating. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's no way I could keep him on there. Okay. But of course, his narrative and all the guys that follow him and all the guys that hate me, oh, it's because Conan is jealous of him. Conan is a hater. Now I'm to listen to his work. Then the last thing is I took him out of Gorilla. Because, again, he wasn't doing what I was asking him to do. So I ended up having to do that to, to get into Gorilla myself. Then we weren't using him at all. Then I took him out of the ring because he was, he was actually very fat. 
very lazy and was like just thought he could get over on being vampiro he just wore a t-shirt and these shorts it's like there was no rock appeal about him he didn't paint his face i was like bro you're useless <laughs> of course i'm a I've right. always hated him. <laughs> I'm out to get him, you know, and that narrative was spread on the internet. So it was almost like the CM Punk thing. I had to hear the all the time, you know? So like around two years ago, we had our version of the Royal Rumble and I couldn't wrestle. And I showed up in the match with a Donald Trump shirt mm -hmm. <laughs> and I sat in the corner giving orders and bro, the people were furious mm. And I was just sitting in a corner giving orders and they built a wall around me where nobody could literally touch me. Bro, they played Vampiro's music. The pop in that place was massive. Yeah, that's a fun one. He watch. got into the middle of the ring and me and him did Oh, is that when you started trading punches back and forth? Right. I remember that. Right. right. <laughs> we got into a slugfest for 15 seconds and then he eliminated me mm -hmm. and the place came unglued. And what I showed everybody was, I'm not jealous. If it was about ego, I would have eliminated him. And I showed the whole locker room a big lesson. I'm a professional. And no matter what I feel about somebody, if it's business, I'm going to do it. So Punk needs to do business. He needs to work with Hangman. He needs to work with NJF. And Tony has to get him in a room. Because what happened was is he's reading the on the internet. Who knows what type of being said in the dress room behind his back. Right. Nobody's communicating. Tensions are rising. Nobody's done anything to pacify this thing. And, and, and I'll give you an, another example in AAA. I'm not going to say the wrestlers, but two very, very famous wrestlers hated each other. Okay. Because one of the wrestlers comes from the hood and he hangs out with a posse and he showed up late to a wrestling match once. And the other wrestler got in his face and they pulled the gun on him. Okay. So then they were having problems and we were in triple mania. And both crews, listen to this, both crews, both wrestlers' crews came into the wrestling, into the dressing room with guns. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm telling Dorian and his dad, bro, what if something happens between the posses, not even them? <laughs> this could be in the news. Right. <laughs> Somebody's going to get shot here. <laughs> yeah. These guys are from the streets <clears throat> because you haven't sat them down and worked this out. And if you want, I'll do it. But that's what has, so now he needs to sit him down and go, okay, you're getting paid $2 million. You're getting, they're all getting paid like $2 million, bro. Yeah, Punk's getting five. Five, all right? You're so getting yeah. paid a lot of money, okay? You did what you had to do. You fought. You went out there. You threw your pipe bombs. Now let's do business. And whoever right. doesn't want to do business, there's a door. And that's yeah. all there is to it. So, yeah. it, so it, you guys in wanted... a case where, let me just wrap up with this. Because there's a lot of rumors that guys might walk out or whatever. It might be a him or me situation. Both you guys, if you're in Tony's chair and on one side you have Punk. I'll freeze you till your contract's up. I'm not going to let you go just like that. Okay. But I mean, who? If it's, you're going to give me a him or me, yeah. I'll freeze you. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Why can't I have you all? It's your f problem, not mine. Don't make it mine. You you're go. the guys that went into business for yourself. You're the guys that were on professional now you're going to put it on me to decide to make a choice i don't want to make a choice mm. my choice is we all work together and let's make some money how about yeah. that it's like yeah you went into business for yourself you right. went into business for yourself bro, none of you guys my... had the it's decency like... the courtesy the respect Not... to give me a heads up it's like you went nobody's into even for your... apologizing me probably right right it's like you went right. into business for yourself and you're you taking went into it business for yourself right and like this is my business i'm paying you right you are going to do my business now Right. Not your business. Not right. your business. If you want to get paid, you're going to do my business. We need to fix this. Sit in the room and let's go out and do business and make some money. Bro, right, the only would, silver lining will come out of this Vince is Vince McMahon because you know what yeah. Vince would have done. But right. you know Tony's a cool, laid-back guy. It's almost like putting Ray Mysterio in charge of <laughs> AEW. Right. He's not a mean guy. He's not going <laughs> to He's not going to berate you. You right. know what I'm saying? I will, you know. Right. But Tony's a very nice guy, and they take advantage of that. He, right. Bro, the guy's a f sweetheart, bro. He really is. I, I like Tony to death, and I felt very, very bad for him. Yeah, I did too. Now he needs a f lay the hammer down. Yeah, he does. And he needs a solicit, bro. I don't know. That's the thing. It's like he, he's got people's numbers. you got well, people that can give you advice, dude. It's like you got to get outside this bubble because this bubble that you're in, 
has, it, it, it just, it's all problems. It's very toxic. It's like, you know, all these guys are firing each other. You need to solicit advice outside and of I, your bubble. And, yeah, I, you know? and I wouldn't suspend or fire nobody if everybody's willing to work. But if somebody's not willing to work, that you are fired. And, not fired, but suspended yes, and fine. Well, if there's, right. a, there's a precedent been set where Eddie Kingston got suspended. If, if Punk threw the first punch, isn't it your your call? You have to suspend him. You have to follow that precedent. Or there's going to be favorites. We don't know, what, we don't know, know what happened. There's we don't different know what, rules for know different things. Bro. I know, I know, yeah. Let me say because we don't know how antagonistic the situation was. Right. If, if a guy gets in your face, you're going to swing, looking like he's going to hit you, and you like if yeah. this doesn't take you know, and you punch, you, you throw a punch at the guy, then it's like you know that's that's different. But this sounded like Sammy went to the back, and Eddie was pit, Eddie was pissed off and pie faced him. Right. That's that's you know whatever. So, but but uh, which is the similar situation here would be. You know, they're pissed off like if Punk was the Sammy character because the Bucks are pissed at Punk for what, what he said out there, and they approached him. You know. But Joe, Punk, you got to remember the first yeah, shot. You know, you got to remember. So they suspended uh, this guy Eddie, Eddie Kingston, Kingston for how long? What, three weeks? I think. It was, yeah, I don't think he it just was, wrestled. Yeah, Ishii. He just came three back. Weeks. Yeah, just right, and yeah. then he wrestled Ishii. Now you're going to suspend your world top champion, guy world champion. and your and and young bucks who are your trios champion and your vice, uh, vice presidents. It's not the same thing, right. you know. Yeah. So I would have no problems if he didn't sus- uh, uh, suspend him as long as everybody's willing to work. If this is, this somebody's is giving too. me a tough time, I'm going to suspend you until you, you know, until you want to work. And if you don't want to work, then I'll just freeze you. And maybe there's a provision in my contract that says I don't have to pay you as much. I don't know. Um, you know, and then you can leave after your two or three years are done. It yeah. sounds like they and maybe but, but, and maybe but, they but, do. But, 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 but this is let me make a point here, too. Yeah. You know, this is stuff that Vince McMahon has had to deal with. This is stuff that Eric Bischoff has had to deal with. Now, Tony Khan is having to deal with it. So let's see how he did. Because, like, bro, just every Pocony has had to deal with it. Bro, talent, sometimes the, the, the heat gets raised. When talent doesn't like each other in real life, the heat gets turned up very fast, very quickly. Yeah. And it's like, until, bro, what was the, what was the first, let me ask you this, Conan. What was the first time you had to deal with this? Do you remember the uh, first time you had to deal with it? Because no. I'm sure you learned from experience, okay, because you've had to deal with it a couple, a few times in your career. We're having to deal with treaties like Fights it comes everything. from experience. Yeah, it comes from experience. How do you deal with these situations? Yeah. Well, you know? you know, like like you said before, every situation is different, and I treat every situation accordingly. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, who's involved? If if one guy's never really been a troublemaker, but the other guy has, you know, he's always, so it just it depends on. There's a couple variables. <clears throat> Right. Well, this has been a pretty good talk. So obviously, the, the, the AEW is providing some good content for us these days, so <laughs> we're making the most of it. All right, right. Right. So um, thank you for everybody that's been listening to K100 Talks, making it so popular. Um, if you have any questions on the subject or any comments or anything, send them to the mailbags at K100. What is it? Questions? K100 questions at gmail.com. Yeah. The, uh, keep the letter short so we can read a grip of them. That's been K100 Talks. Boom.